first thing you need to do is cut your cardboard down to size. My tiny loom fits in the palm of my hand. <laughs> so that's what size you are going to make yours. I just use the flap of like an Amazon box. The only thing you have to pay attention to are where the corrugations run and you really can't see it on this one. There, you see the little wavy parts. You're gonna to wanna to construct your loom so that your corrugations are going north and south, vertical, um, not this way. Uh, you'll wanna make um, about the size of your hand. You know, it's real scientific here. Uh, I'm gonna cut off a piece that's about that big. And if you can see, I think you can, I'm gonna cut kind of between where those little corrugations run, right? Uh, and you could use either one of these pieces. They're both great. Maybe I'll use the bigger one. And then I will take my scissors and cut the slots for the yarn. That's the next step. Uh, if you need a minute, take a minute, pause. Uh, if not, we'll just move on. So you can see on this cardboard in the light where the divisions are between the little corrugations. And I just kind of cut between the little, I don't know, marks. Um, and you, I do a trick, I marked my scissors so I know how deep to cut, you don't have to do that. But I basically just start at one side and go to the other. And try to keep my cutting between the little corrugation marks. And I'm gonna cut an even number, one, two, three, four, five, six, because I find that's easier for folks to use uh, when they begin weaving and that's about good I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna come down start in the same spot and I'm just gonna eyeball it I'm gonna use my calibrated scientific eyeball to do this and it's pretty close so there now you have six little slits on either side there's your loom next Now it's time for warping. You will need about five yards of yarn. I use Lily Sugar and Cream because it's cheap and it's cotton. And the main thing is you don't want your yarn to be stretchy. You want it to be pretty tough um, because you're going to put a lot of tension on it. Flip your loom over, starting from the bottom, pinch your yarn, and you're going to come up through the top. That's step one. And I'm looping left to right. You can loop right to left, doesn't matter. I'm right-handed, so this is why it comes out this way. Before you stretch your warp down to the bottom, put your toothpicks on and pinch them with your thumb. So let's turn in the back. You should have a free yarn at the bottom going up and then through the top. Put your toothpicks on and then come down through the first bottom. You don't want this like crazy tight, uh, <laughs> because it's gonna be hard to weave. Um, but you just want it to be pretty solid all the way down. You're going to come up the back into the next strand or into the next slot and then down. And then come up the back into the slot and down. And just do that until you get to the other side. And then, you know, once you get a couple of these done, you don't have to hold the toothpicks. All right, and then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna leave all this mess here. I'm not gonna unravel the rest of it because I'm just gonna cut it off. When you are done with your strings, you're gonna tie the loose end and this end that's still on the butterfly together. And I'm just gonna use a double knot. So there's one, and then I'm gonna hold my finger down. And it doesn't have to be super tight. Um, in fact, it's kind of hard to make it super tight if you're only tying by yourself. Um, but you just need to be double knot and pull. And then take your scissors and cut it off. Doo -doo. All right, and then get that out of the way. And then you will slide your toothpicks down to either edge. And what that does is give you room to weave. If you'll notice, there's a space right here that I've created with these toothpicks. If you don't have the toothpicks, um, it will still work. You'll just have a harder time putting your needle up underneath. So 
That's why I like to have the little toothpicks under there. If you don't have toothpicks, you can use just about anything, little baby cardboard spacers. Um, yeah. And this process, y'all, is the same no matter what size loom you make. I've got this loom over here that's warped upside down for a wall hanging, right? It's already got a stick in there and I've used a different warping pattern. But if you'll notice, the loom is the same. I've done it. This is a double layered cardboard, but I cut my slits parallel to the direction of the corrugation and I've got the same number um, threads, same number of slits on the top and the bottom. Um, I've actually got an odd number of uh, slits just in case I wanted an odd number of warp threads. I could warp this loom just like I did this one. Same process. That is how you warp and make a tiny loom. Ugh, what a mess. Okay. Ugh, 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 in the direction that these wrong spot. <laughs> I like that noise. That's a fun noise.